And look at that. Look what I just got from the uh, post office today. So uh, I don't think this will be that kind of a serious video compared to uh, many of my other stuff. But anyways, so uh, in my uh, testing rig, which you usually have seen, I'm running a very old, like or nearly like a decade old 60 hertz monitor. And it's coming to its uh, like end of life pretty much. So I wanted to get something new for that system. In my other rig, I have an Asus 4K display, but I personally didn't like it so much. It has a lot of issues testing wise, like, uh, well, it's, it's quite known that I constantly run like old parts in old operating system environments. And uh, a 4K display definitely gives you some issues when you try to run it in XP environment, for example. So uh, it didn't really work out. I couldn't run many of the old 3D tests like Aquamark 01, 03, etc. And that's why I had to get rid of it. So I've been running via that very old monitor. And uh, I wanted to get something new. For that rig, 1080p is definitely enough. But I wanted to give like a shot at very high... Uh, uh, refresh rate. So uh, I decided to get this uh, new monitor from Asus, which they released uh, last December. So this is the uh, Asus VG279QM. I don't get why they don't have the uh, QM at the end, but anyway, so this is the 27 inch version of their new uh, 280 hertz IPS monitor. So they have two options. The 20 5 inch version and the 27 inch. The 27 inch is a little bit more expensive than the 25 one. As you could guess, the difference was around like 50 euros. And even this is pretty like expensive. Uh, this is pretty expensive for a, 10, uh, a 1080p display, anyways. But I wanted to give it a shot. So this is like pretty much the best you can get when it comes to uh, when it comes to. Uh, 1080p screens so it can support G-Sync so it's G-Sync compatible I don't think there's any like difference like between real like uh, standard G-Sync and G-Sync compatible in practice but anyway so it's G-Sync compatible it's IPS display I wanted to get an IPS one because I like the uh, better colors of IPS and it has better viewing, ang viewing angles of course TN is a little bit like uh, faster but doesn't really matter for me I, I will give I will test what's the difference of uh, refresh rate in some old like 3d benchmarks apart from normal use see what kind of performance comparisons there are between 60 120 240 and 280 so this is I think it's 240 Hertz by default and you have to enable the 280 Hertz uh, overclocking profile uh, like at a touch of a button I think so it's not like uh, 280 Hertz from the get-go you have to enable it so it, I think it's an overclocking profile but anyway so this supports pretty much all you can get so yeah this supports pretty much everything as you would guess so it's fast IPS one millisecond respond time but I don't think it's gray to gray so it's some other uh, way, to, way to measure usually IPS Usually IPS monitors can't get so low gray to gray wrist punch time like TN panels, but doesn't matter. 280 hertz NVIDIA G-Sync compatible. Three year warranty and everything, but doesn't really matter. This is, monitors are always some kind of a, like personal thing. You want you will get the you will get a monitor what you like. Some people prefer different things than others. 4K is really really nice in uh, desktop use like uh, in a workstation build but uh, for gaming it's too hard because you need the horsepower from your graphics cards you need at least one 2080 ti in some cases you might need need even two and sli always has its own issues although it's much easier to run two-way sli nowadays compared to uh, three-way or four-way like five to ten years ago so, but anyways, it, there's always some kind of risks involved when you run more than one card. So it doesn't matter. 27 inch is a bit large for 1080p. That's true, but 
as I don't view the monitor from that close, I think it will be all right. So let's just unbox this monitor and see what it comes with. I think I will show it to you later when it's set up. And that's pretty much how the monitor looks like when it's unpacked. They actually have the uh, full uh, model number labeled over here at the top right uh, corner of the screen. So it's VG279QM. 280 hertz, it's one millisecond trace free, so I'm, I'm not fully sure what's the way measurement way they are using to measure the latency, but I'm pretty sure it's not gray to gray. Anyways, so I did the unpacking off camera just for extra security. Nothing really special about this. Okay, so this monitor has uh, two HDMI ports, one full display port. A USB 2.0 port, I think. I think it's 2.0, but one USB port anyways. A headphone jack and your AC uh, uh, power port. Now, maybe the only thing I don't like about these new and modern monitors is the uh, lack of a DVI port. Just like with like newest graphics cards like 2080 Ti. I know that DVI is pretty much outdated connection type nowadays, but it would be nice to have one as backup for like testing purposes and for overall compatibility uh, wise even when you can't run the uh, target specs through that connection like for example the uh, very popular BenQ Zoe 25 inch 240 hertz TM monitor that has one DVI connection I know you can pretty much manage uh, with adapters but an adapter is never completely same as a native connection but i think this will do as i test older parts quite regularly it would be nice to have that dvi option just as backup but uh, i think this will do and uh, i also want to see that can you run the 280 hertz overclocking profile through hdmi i'm pretty sure that the newest standards of hdmi can run at least 240 hertz just fine because my capture card that I'm not, that I'm now using is uh, uh, it runs the display. I mean, the, it runs the display through HDMI. So then I would have to get an adapter from Display Port to HDMI if I wanted to run the capture card when I'm running the full uh, refresh rate. But we will see about that, anyways. I think that's pretty much it. It's nothing really uh, spectacular about this monitor. I will be changing it now and I will test the things I just mentioned. But anyways, monitors are always kind of personal thing. You buy the thing you want to get. So if you want to see like more in-depth review of this monitor against other monitors side by side, then there are plenty of out there on YouTube already and other websites. I just wanted to make this video to show you guys the short unboxing overview of this monitor and my reasons why I wanted to get just this one. It's quite expensive for 1080p. It costs over 400 euros with shipping, so it's not a cheap full HD monitor. But for my use, 1080p is pretty much just fine, even when this is quite big for 1080p, but then it will work just fine with the capture card and so on. And I think it will do. Okay, guys, so uh, it wasn't that straightforward to get the full uh, 280 hertz uh, refresh rate working, nor was it straightforward to get the uh, uh, monitor working well with high refresh rate with the Ava Media uh, capture card. So uh, now I can confirm that you can't run the overclocking profile of 280 hertz if you use an HDMI connection. So you have to use a display port if you want to use the uh, if you want to use a higher refresh rate than 240 hertz. 240, 240 hertz works works uh, just fine using an HDMI connection, but if you want to go higher than that, you have to use display port. So uh, just that, and uh, you you uh, enable the uh, overclocking profile using the buttons over here. So uh, here. In the gaming section, you just go to overclocking on max refresh rate and you can choose 270 or 280. So that's pretty much it. And uh, so the uh, problem, what I 
encountered with the uh, capture card was that first I couldn't even uh, get any screen when I connected the capture card for the first time. It was actually because I, I had the uh, uh, overclocking profile turned on as I was using DisplayPort previously and that doesn't work with an HDMI cable so I just got black screen and nothing else and uh, when I solved when I managed to solve that the uh, thing that I found out was that when I had the uh, monitor connected straight to the to the capture card and then capture card to the graphics card I found that the refresh rate was always stuck at 60 Hertz and we don't want that we want to be able to stream the content we run on the screen and on the desktop but we want to maintain that desired high refresh rate so the way to connect your monitor to your graphics card and your capture card so that you can still stream your content and maintain that desired uh, refresh rate is so that if you take a look over here, so sorry my table isn't that clean, but anyways, so uh, so here is the uh, setup, here's the capture card setup, so uh, I'm running one HDMI cable from the monitor and it's connected to the output port of the Avermedia capture card uh, device, then I have another HDMI cable over here at the input side, which is connected to the uh, 2080 Ti Kimpin graphics card over there, one micro USB cable, which the uh, this unit uses to get its power from, a mic, so mic is over here, and then of course a micro SD card at the rear of the unit over here. Then, when looking at the graphics card itself, I have one full display port cable over here, which is connected to the monitor as well. So uh, I am pretty much running like a dual display system or configuration as one. So I'm getting the signal straight to the uh, monitor from the graphics card at full refresh rate, but I have a secondary display connection coming from the graphics card to the uh, capture card and then the monitor. And that will, uh, that will uh, save the content I'm running. So the thing you have to do is you have to go to your NVIDIA control panel. So hold on a bit. So NVIDIA control panel. And uh, go on the left, go to set up multiple displays. It's under the display section over here. And I will, first I will do so that you will see how, how it should look like in the first glance. So So this is the, this is the uh, setup you will see when you first uh, enter this uh, page in the display section. So you should have two devices listed over here. So select the displays you want to use. Uh, number one should be your real display. So the Asus VG279QM, number one. And the second one is the Avermedia GC513. It's labeled with a number two. So you want to right click the uh, main display clone with two now they are united and then just apply now they are cloned so now the capture card will save exactly the same thing as uh, what you are doing with your main monitor and you can still run the desired refresh rate when if you don't do this the uh, Streaming doesn't really work. So when I tried to uh, save, like uh, when I was running uh, 3D Mark 11, it was just it was only showing like a blank uh, desktop wallpaper. I couldn't see any of the icons on the desktop, and the uh, I couldn't even see the 3D Mark workload. So uh, that's why you have to do this when you uh, try to run this for the first time. So you have the uh, HDMI to the capture card and display port to the monitor. It's likely that it will load the HD, HDMI by default. So you have to select the display port using the uh, uh, onboard buttons yet again. Just go uh, to the settings page over here. So over here, input select and here to select display port and 
and press press OK. Then it will load the uh, connection type we want to use. So that's pretty much it. The uh, onboard display is quite good. So you can actually set an FPS counter or refresh rate counter at the top right part of the screen. And that will tell you or if, I mean, what refresh rate your monitor is uh, currently using. So uh, now it's running at 280 hertz. If some 3D program or application that I run changes the monitor refresh rate on its own, this uh, small uh, on-screen display will tell me that right away. So that's really, really handy. The, you set the uh, refresh rate manually from the NVIDIA console panel again. So just go to uh, change resolution in the display part again. And here you can choose between different refresh rates. So mine starts at 85 hertz and the highest one is 280 hertz. Just set that and apply. That's pretty much it. Okay, so to uh, show it to you guys. So this is just changing the uh, screen to the capture card once again. So uh, I will show you a quick run in 3D Mark 11, just one graphics card or graphics test. So just 3D Mark 11 graphics test one run in performance mode. It's centered, so not stretched. So let's see how well it will show to you guys. around 270, 260, 270 FPS, or well, now it gets lowered. It, it gets to lower value during halfway of the bench, but anyways, you get the idea. So this is the way we want to be able to stream, like 3, 3D benchmarking, for example. So now you can see the test, uh, like very like clearly, but we also maintain the desired refresh rate. So it's a bit hard to set up, but it will get just fine in the end. GPU-Z, 2070 megahertz on the core, 38 max temp. So yeah, so that's how you do it. That's how you set up the uh, Asus VG279QM, especially with a capture card, works just fine. And 280 hertz works fabulously well. Not fully sure if there's any like overclocking headroom. Could you go even further, like 300? 300 hertz on an IPS panel is, would be just something absolutely amazing. But anyways, so this is pretty much it. Thank you for tuning in for this 1080p, 280 hertz IPS monitor unboxing and a short overview. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.